Hey Wompers, in this tutorial I will be teaching you how we can form our very own rocket using curves, how we can apply different colors and materials on the same build and how we can make a beautiful little scene out of it, adding some stylish effects and lighting. So feel free to follow along as usual and let's get started. So first let's hover over the top bar where we find our primitives menu and grab a curve primitive. Here we want to delete the second point, click on the curve to open its settings on the right. Here I'm just increasing roundness, density and put group strength to around 5. We can also find our color and materials menu here straight away. I'm choosing a light bluish color and giving it a bit of metalness and roughness as well. Now, since we want to start with the very top of our rocket, I'm grabbing point one and bringing this up a little bit so we have some more space below. I'm then scaling it down from the center and copy the point by pressing Ctrl Z, Ctrl V or holding down Alt slash Shift on a Mac and drag it out there. As you can see, this is basically also how you could make a cone. Now I'm doing a third point here that I make even bigger and I'm bringing this up a little more so I have even more space below. And then I'm making a last fourth point that I'm scaling small again. And now you see we already have that rocket kind of shape, at least for the main body part of the rocket. Now, once we're happy with the shape that we've created here, we want to click on the union and get out a new cube from the primitives menu. In that way, we make sure that it's straight away inside of the same union as well. We then want to turn it into a negative in the object's properties menu and make a cut from below. I'm also adding a bit of group strength to smooth it out. This also adds to the overall style that we're going for. You can also change your color of the negative if you would like to. Now next I'm just copying the same curve that we have here already and dragging it below our negative in the scene list and that way it won't be affected by it. I'm deleting all points except for our last one and turn the primitive that the curve is based on into a cylinder. Now make sure you have your point selected because then you can also manipulate the shape. For example, we scale the cylinder very thin here and then I'm also rounding it up in the object's properties menu. So now we are building that bottom part of the rocket where the fire is coming out. For that, we obviously already have the same material applied since we made a copy. And then we are making a second point. The second point I'm rounding up completely so it smooths it out. And that is looking lovely, but I think we can improve it a little more by just basically copying the same curve that we already have here again. And then we are turning this into a negative. With our negative copy, we want to make sure that we rescale it a bit smaller from the center. In that way, we basically make a cut from the inside, also making it whole. And in that way, we also improve the overall shape of it, which I think looks great now. So once we're happy with our shape, we can close it down in the scene list and call it Rocket. We then want to copy this union and click on the material menu on the top bar to create a new one. It is automatically applied since we have it selected in the scene list and I'm going for a fairly saturated blue tone, also giving it some metalness and roughness. Now we see that they are basically within each other right now, the blue one and the white one. And now we basically just want to make one part of it blue and one white. So we go into the blue part and we take our negative cube that we have here, we bring it at the very bottom of the scene list so it affects everything above it and we basically just scale it up until we only have the top part of the rocket that should be blue. Now we just need to go into our white rocket and copy a negative of the cube that we have at the bottom and also bring it at the top so we only have our top part of the rocket that is now blue and we have a very lovely little soft cut between the parts as well which looks great I think. Then next I want to add a window to the rocket and for that I'm grabbing a new cylinder from the primitives menu and I straight away also add our material that we already created for the top part. 
I'm then rotating it sideways. You can rotate in 45 degrees angles if you hold down shift while rotating. And I'm just bringing it up there and scaling it so it has the right size for how I imagine a window to be in this rocket. Now you see I'm having a bit of struggles to select the right shape and we can actually lock our unions and primitives up. In that way we can't select them anymore while they're locked. Very useful when we want to work on other things that are overlaying it. I've also rounded up the window to around 70 roundness. This really helps to have it a bit more smooth within the other round shape as well. Now I'm copying the same shape that we already have and just scale it a bit smaller from the center. This really is a good way to create some easy detail. And I'm doing this one more time, just scaling it a bit wider and turning it into a negative and making a cut for our window here. I'm making this a bit smaller and then also grouping it a little bit from the inside so it smooths it out. I think this looks really nice now. Now I'm just copying our negative again, but turn it back into a positive and switch it to a sp uh, sphere primitive. And now I'm unapplying the material so we don't have the same blue material here. But go for a very dark kind of glassy window that, yeah, what a window would look like. I'm also adding just a little bit of metalness as well because it gives us a nicer reflection that I feel like would be really nice here. And then I'm also just bringing it into the right position. And I think this looks great. Really adds to the rocket. Can imagine someone being in there now. We can then also just turn this together into one union and call it window and also lock it up so we don't select it on accident. I'm then getting out a new curve primitive doing the same kind of settings except we want to go for a cube because now we are going to make the wings. I'm selecting our blue material here as well. We have a nice little color scheme going on between the white and the blue here. And I'm also turning on the mirror on the x-axis because in that way we can easily create two wings that are mirrored to each other. So the cube I'm also completely rounding up and I'm scaling it a lot smaller and thinner. The cube you can actually scale on all axes, um, at least if you have selected the point, just make sure to do that. I'm then copying one more point and I'm rotating this point scaling it a bit smaller and making a third one. And now that we have those points, you can see how much we can differ the shape just by rotating it. We can really have so much shape control and so much style decision by only just rotating the shapes. I'm also rotating them a little bit inwards and I think that's looking beautiful. Let's bring them down a little bit as well and yeah. This is it for the base of the rocket basically and now we can add some more effects to it like some flames and smoke coming out of it and maybe some stars. So for the flames I'm going for another curve, same settings once again. Um, this time I'm keeping it sphere based, I'm turning it into the hole that we made here at the bottom of the rocket and I'm going for a fairly light yellowish color at the beginning of the flame, adding quite a bit of roughness and translucency as well. Then I'm copying the point here and the cool thing about curves as well is that we can bring in transitions in the color. So if I jump into the color of the second point and we change that to a bit of an orange red kind of color, it creates this natural lovely transition or color gradient between the two points and I think that looks really lovely for a flame. I'm then also getting out a new sphere and give that a very white bit of yellowish kind of color, some roughness and translucency. And with that, I am gooping this into the already existing flame, also speeding this up a little bit because I'm basically just copying the spheres now. But with this, I'm creating some stylized effects of like the smoke that's hitting the ground when the rocket is starting. And I think that really adds a lot to it. I then also want to add another effect and for that I'm going to create some sparkles. And sparkles in WOMP are the easiest thing ever. We basically only get out a new cylinder, we stretch it a bit long and make it quite small. We also want to round it up completely. And then I'm going into the color to give it a nice yellowish shiny kind of color with some low roughness, tiny bit of metalness as well. And then we basically just copy this one cylinder that we have here. We rotate it 90 degrees and increase goop strength and 
voila we already have a really nice looking sparkle very easy trick to do that um, then grouping this together and just copy it around making maybe around three um, also scaling them um, smaller a little bit here and there this kind of gives more of an illusion of um, depth as well um, and I think this looks so lovely. So now let's come to the presentation part. Um, we turn off the floor grid. We create a new backdrop from the top bar menu. Here you can of course go for whatever you want, but I feel like with the sparkles and the flame, we need a really nice dark purplish kind of background, which really makes the colors pop and look so good as well. And then I am just going in and changing the global lighting. This is an image that is basically your skybox, which will change your brightness and how your materials are displayed as well. You can then also play around with the exposure of it, which is the brightness. And then we can add some individual lights and that is really important for this scene specifically, I think, because we can add a lot to the flame effect. I am basically using a spherical light here and turn this into a bit of a orangey kind of color. You can of course change color and luminance of the lights as well. And with that, I think um, we reflect a little more about of the flame into the rocket as well. And then I'm also grabbing some more spherical lights to give it an even stronger rim light with a warm color as well. Rim light always looks really nice and makes your creations pop compared to the background as well. So yeah, I'm placing them slightly behind the rocket from the sides and I think that looks really, really nice. So once we're fully happy with how our creation looks and it's ready to be presented, we click on publish at the top right. Here we can choose our thumbnail. This is how it will be displayed on the discover page. We can select a title. Don't forget about that. Um, add some hashtags. People can click on those to find creations under that hashtag. You can share your WAMP and then also choose your copyright settings if you don't want other people to use your project. And then you just click on publish project and here we are. This is how the render looks like. I think it turned out lovely. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that we will see some of your rockets on the discover page. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.